What's up guys, it's Bucky and welcome to your fourth chemistry lab tutorial. In this video, I want to talk to you guys about the Erlenmeyer flask. Now, this is probably the most famous or popular pieces of chemistry glassware and that's because I think of its unique shape. You don't see anything that looks like this other than in a chemistry lab and uh, well, I, I don't know, I just think it looks really cool. But the uses of these things are actually really similar to beakers. For example, you can use these for measuring, you can also use them for boiling solutions, etc, etc. Basically anything that you can do with a beaker, you can do with an Erlenmeyer flask. Now the reason that you may prefer to use an Erlenmeyer flask rather than a beaker in certain experiments is because first of all, it makes it really easy to swirl solutions. If you try to swirl a solution with a beaker, it's probably going to get all over the place, but in an Erlenmeyer flask, it's really easy. Another thing is that whenever you have a product and you need to seal it up, sealing things up in a beaker is actually kind of difficult because the mouth is so wide, but with these flasks you can just go ahead and put a cork in it or a rubber stopper and you can seal them up really easy. Now another reason is that they don't tip as easy as beakers. Due to the shape, whenever you set it down, they're really hard to knock over so they don't tip easy and the last reason is just, well, it looks really cool. Now if you want some advice on buying these, first of all, the most important thing I can say is make sure that it's legal to own in your state. And you guys are probably going to think I'm kidding whenever I tell you this, but in Texas, these are illegal and I don't know if any other states ban them or not, but thanks to all the meth labs, even though these are just, you know, stupid pieces of glass that are shaped funny, these are illegal to own in Texas unless you have a special permit. I know. Who would have thought that owning an Erlenmeyer flask would be illegal? But anyways, first thing, make sure it's legal in your state. Now if it is, then what I recommend doing is getting a set of two. As you notice, all of my flasks, I have two of the same size from 1000 milliliters all the way down to 50 milliliters and you can actually often buy them in a five piece set just like that. And if you can only get, you know, one or two, you probably want to stick with 250 milliliters. That's what this one is right here. It's, I want to say the most common size, probably 250 and 500 milliliters. That's what we're going to be using in our experiments. Another thing is, just like the beakers, you want to make sure that it has, see that volume indicator on the side? Because if you have them without the volume indicator, of course, you never know how much solution or, you know, product you have in your flasks. And the last thing I want to say is, well, two more things. First of all, make sure you get high quality glass because like, you know, beakers and boiling flasks, anything else that we can boil in, including these flasks, you want to make sure that you have high quality glass so it doesn't overheat and crack or chip. And the last thing is, if you can, go ahead and buy stoppers too. Because whenever we experiment and we, you know, have our final product, and we, want, we want to keep it for, you know, however long or... If we're just, you know, producing some gases and we want to capture them, it's really helpful to have stoppers, both solid stoppers, corks, or these ones with holes in them. I don't know if you guys can see it. So anyways, this is uh, helpful whenever you want to capture the gases. But anyways, that's my little video on Erlenmeyer flasks. Wow, that's kind of a tongue twister to say. But anyways, thank you for watching and I'll see you guys later.